Don't miss this weekend's festival in New Orleans from UnitedTinyHouse.com. Coming up, have a workshop hands-on in Regalwood, North Carolina, RelaxShacks.com for more info on that. And upcoming videos from many cabins on the Jamaica Cottage Shop in Vermont. Hey, what's up, guys? Deke, RelaxShacks.com. Van dwellings, as you know, they're becoming hot, hot, hot. And as a result of their newfound trendiness, the prices, especially of the resale ones, seem to be going up. They're getting expensive, but that is not the case here. Hey, I'm Dan. And I'm Rachel. And we're with Banana Van Adventures. And we're here with our Sprinter Van Conversion. For starters, tell us why. I know Sprinter van conversions are pretty hot right now, but what made you guys decide, I want to live in something that's, you know, X amount of whatever minuscule square feet? So we wanted to be able to travel more to do more volunteer work. As we read the Bible more, we wanted to be able to give back more. And so this allowed us the freedom to travel and give back in communities as we go into them. Okay, now is this, this is something you guys DIY style converted yourselves? What was that whole process like? For those out there maybe aspiring, to do a conversion van? Um, so the process began, I guess, last October. We bought the van um, because Daniel had been going on craft shows, selling his woodworking and sleeping in an F-150. And it wasn't very comfortable. So we just traded it for this van, um, threw a bed in the back, and that's kind of how it all began. Um, then he started making a little small improvements, put in a sink, put in running water. Um, I would take a couple trips with him. And uh, so it took about six months to get it to where it was really like livable. Um, and then finally I agreed to go full time in it. Okay. Yeah. Now, that, so that was a slow process to get hurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It yeah. 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 Was, was a good <laughs> slow process, but less than a year. Uh, one of the big things I did to get prompted to get it rolling is I went on Craigslist and found an antique Tonka Toy RV and I just brought it home, set it on the <laughs> coffee table, didn't say anything about it and about a week later she finally started talking about it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's yeah. like the, uh, the elephant in the room yeah. or the RV model in the room. Let's talk about this. Here's a reminder. <laughs> now you guys, uh, well, first of all, what's uh, people are going to ask, what's the budget so far on something like this if you don't mind? Yeah. So we'll be in less than 15000 everything from the composting toilet to the solar to running water and everything in there and that's including rehabbing it four different tri times just trying to lay out we like is it including the van too itself it, including the okay van as itself. you say wow that's yeah. actually pretty good because these vans are not cheap even yeah. the used ones it's about ten thousand for just the van yeah oh that's pretty impressive so five thousand bucks more or less to outfit your van yeah. yep. including just about everything now tell me about the setup for uh you know utilities like shower heat well, what are your sources for that so heat and we haven't quite got that one figured out just yet we i don't do well in the code so no. <laughs> i'm not too worried about that when i can drive south uh, as far as cooling we have an ac unit we've got a generator that will operate the ac if we ever need to turn it on so as we're going south if we go south in the summer we have the ability to go cool with the ac yeah, the composting toilet, we are going to go with the Nature's Head uh, composting toilet. We've been doing a lot of research and really debating it. For a while, we were just using public facilities, but that got really annoying in the middle of the You night. want your own space. Yes, yeah, yeah. and to walk like in the middle of the night to have to go into the gas station, it's just it's too long of a process. Yeah. So we're going to go with the Nature's Head composting toilet and actually put it underneath the sink so it'll just kind of pull out when we need it and then pull back in when we don't. Um, and then the shower, we're actually making the bed movable so we can pull the bed inside and then walk around to the outside, step back inside the van, um, and Daniel's run the water to the back of the van so we can actually shower. So you pre-plumbed it? Yep. Okay. So when Very we smart. The first water we just did was a hand pump, and it took about 12 <laughs> pumps to get 16 ounces of water. So yeah. it was a little too conservatory of water. Uh -huh. too much. So we installed a 3-gallon per minute sure flow 12-volt pump. And so we've got a kitchen sink here with a full size sink. We just took a double sink and modified it, cut it in half, and then we just took the bigger sink and used it as our sink. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of the kitchen area here, tell me about this little stove, because this is, I've noticed that people are touring through your, your van. It's a cool little, almost like a marine stove, it looks like. Is that what it is? 
So it's a camp chef stove. It's okay. the it's through our outdoor camp oven. Not only is it a two burner stove, but it also is an oven as well. So mm -hmm. we had cookies baking it in earlier. Oh, the line got huge. All of a sudden, that cookie scent was floating around this festival. Yes, yes I think all I the mooches came out of the woodwork. <laughs> I think I did six batches of cookies today, and they all cooked perfectly. And that's an accomplishment because some ovens just will not cook cookies. They're very thin, um, but these have been great. So I love this oven. And it's still big enough for even your frozen pizzas, so you can still mm -hmm. cook pizza in it as well. Only thing to recommend with this particular one is make sure you rotate it because it does cook a little hot in the back. Okay. Yeah. But. It, the oven works great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, I was looking at it, I'm like, you could fit just about anything in there. It really is like a no-nonsense, almost, not a real size oven, but you're not sacrificing so much um, by way of cooking whatever. You're not going to fit like a Thanksgiving turkey in there. No. Maybe no. like a... Uh, Cornish hen or two. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Cornish gang, yeah, tiny little hen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's actually, we didn't even bolt it down, so if we wanted to, and if we're in a hot area, we can actually take it outside and cook. That way we don't yeah. up too much heat in the van. Oh, yeah. exactly, because you'll roast this place out. Uh, tell us about some of the, one of the coolest things, and I've seen a few of them, but not all of them, are the transforming aspects of this. How did you come up with some of these, and could you show us some of the things in this conversion? Absolutely. So, some of the non-negotiables outside the oven, another non-negotiable was closet space. I'm terrible at folding clothes. I've accepted it. Yeah. So, we wanted to have plenty of storage. So, our closet is actually on wheels. So, we have... 45 inches of closet space. So that's even more closet space than we had in our home back in Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, that's pretty crazy and that's very clever. Yeah. Um, I see it looks like this table probably uh, hides into the bed, it does. stows away mm -hmm. nautically. So it comes all the way out to be a four person table. Really? And that was really important to us because we wanted to be able to have people over. We also like playing board games and we wanted to have room for that. Um, and then it also pushes all the way back in. Yeah. Favorite board game? Uh, small World, hands down. Oh, never played it. Right. Oh, it's less popular, but so good. My personal is Fireball Island. Oh. You ever played I it? I've not tried that one. No. They have a rehashing of it coming out. Really? Um, <laughs> back back in the tiny house, though. Uh, huh. The bed also moves because you're talking about it moving forward for the shower, right? Yes. Yep. So it's like this slide. Uh, it's like a roller coaster bed almost. Yeah. yeah. It's it's. I mean, it takes force to move it, so it's good enough that we can go down the road and it's not going to slide everywhere on its own. But it's, I can actually move it. It's possible for me to move it, so it's not too tough either. Yeah, very clever. Uh, you have quite a bit of storage up here above, all basketed, which is neat, out of sight, out of mind, more or less. Yes. What about other storage? I see under the bed there's quite a bit here. Yep, so we have the storage underneath. It's not for our outdoor gear, but it's designed for our inventory because the way we fund our trips is we have woodworking items, cutting boards, and other artwork that we buy from other artists that we try to support as many other people as we can. So we need the inventory space underneath yeah. the bed. And easily accessible too, which is nice. We also have storage that lifts up Okay. as well. Both seats lift up and under the sink is where the toilet is. And then as you can see, all the storage up high. Yeah. What's kind of neat is I'm sitting in the passenger seat here and you can swivel the whole thing around. So it becomes, and there's a right in front of me, conveniently is a table where I could put my you know, beverage. Um, it swivels around to become part of this room, yeah. a seat in the room, which is nice. Yeah. And it's very comfortable too. That's actually my favorite place to sit in the whole van. Um, I like to just swivel it around, sit up there, and then pop out that table. And it's just, you know, I could use this one, but for some reason I just like that one. It's just the perfect size. It's like a good laptop station or it computer is, yeah. station. Yeah, as like well. a journaling area. Yeah, or if you sat here and turn the other way, you can look out the front windshield and have a view <laughs> of something, I suppose. That's true. And that's also designed so when we're driving, we can open that up and have a table in between us as well. So as we're driving to sit snacks and drinks on oh, as well. We do I gotcha. that quite often. <laughs> Pretty cool. And it makes it easier. Otherwise, if you're trying to hold hands, it just is a workout. So now we actually have <laughs> yeah, a place yeah. to rest your arm. And there you go. You have arm wrestling tournaments right here over the top. Yeah. Um, what's been the most challenging part of making the transition from what you lived in before to this? Because mm -hmm. like, like you were saying, it wasn't yeah. an immediate decision. You had to be convinced. I did. So the things I thought were going to be hard weren't. And um, so I thought community was going to be a problem. I, I love, I'm very communal. I love having friends and I liked just knowing when I was going to see them all. So I thought going on the road would be very lonely because I thought we'd just be wandering around the U.S. alone. But actually the tiny home shows, we go from tiny home show to tiny home show. And it's amazing because we go to about one a month and we see about the same, probably half the same people come oh, to yeah. each one. So frequency. it's not like I have to say goodbye forever. It's like, bye, I'll see you in a month. And social 
social media also keeps me pretty connected to all the people we meet along the way, so actually I don't feel lonely, so that's been a, a plus. I'd say a difficulty would be knowing which clothes to get rid of. I just, I usually I'm good at purging, I'll throw things out and never think about them again. Clothes has been a little tricky because I'll throw out jackets and then wish I had them. Um, so we're here like in New England right now and it's a little colder than we thought it would be, but um, It ain't Nashville, that's for sure. It's not, and yeah. unfortunately I only have a few light jackets, so that's what I'm restricted to. Well you can wear like seven layers and you'll be fine, <laughs> that's right? That's true. Who's that I'm puffy lady who keeps roaming around shivering? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm having to relearn how to, how to dress. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Some good tips and good candid honesty there too. Uh, what's next for you guys? You heading to whatever shows or what's the next phase of, let's say, building this out? What what remains to be done? So with the bad heart moves, it's stiff now. We're going to be upgrading from wood slides to making metal slides. Not only does it move forward to access the shower, but we want it to move out so wherever you park at, you can enjoy the scenery so from the bed. You can sleep under the stars? Yep. That's pretty yeah. awesome. Oh, and the other thing is that I'm excited about is we bought, um, what do we call it, an actuator? So we bought an actuator so that the bed can actually lift up so we can sit up in bed. It's something that we had back in our home. Um, we had one of those remote control beds that would sit up and prop your feet up. It's like one of those and, old people posturepedic yes. beds. <laughs> but we got really spoiled. Like watching Oh, no, it's kind of neat. Yeah. It was nice. And I like to read, so it was perfect. Um, and so What's I've, your sleep number? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I've been kind of missing that. So he's going to make that so that the bed can sit wow, up. Wow, handy dude. Yeah. And both you guys, your sense of style. I like. I was telling you before, I like the color scheme in here. It's very inviting, it's fun, um, it's soothing too. It's not like this angry red color, you know, <laughs> no. with orange dabs everywhere. That, yeah, so, uh, but thank you guys for giving me the, the chance to tour this. Um, any last piece of advice for anyone out there thinking of making the transition? Like any words of warning even? <laughs> Don't try to build the final product the first time. That's too much stress to put on yourself. So just start and put the bed in or whatever you want to start with and just start going on trying out mm -hmm. and just have that peace of mind that if you make a wrong decision you're going to modify it anyway so just start with something and plan on changing it live with the space in essence and figure yes. out yeah kind this of build it around you layout, so. wow okay yes. and we used cheap materials on um, it first and um, it didn't look the prettiest but it, it let us live in the space and be like you know what? i do hate this and we were able to rip it out and not feel bad because it was made out of plywood so before we rebuilt it in a nice way um we just lived in plywood for a little while yeah. Plus, if you get bored of one look, you just go with another, right? Yeah. And affordably. Yeah. And thank you guys so much. Uh, what's the blog or website people can go to to find out more about you? Uh, either Instagram or Facebook. It's banana.van.adventures. And our website will be bananavanadventures.com. Right. Thank you guys so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.